Hello and welcome to the next chapter in our ongoing series of tutorials that will help familiarize you and improve your skills with PaintShop Pro Photo X2 Ultimate. In today's short lesson, I'm going to show you how to use displacement maps to create depth effects. Although displacement maps are introduced way back in version 9, not many folks know of them or what cool effects can be created with them. And as with most other features in PaintShop Pro Photo X2 Ultimate, it's easy and fun to use. With this feature, you can warp or displace one image based on the contents of another image. For example, you can apply text to an image that depicts something with an uneven surface, making it look like the text was there all along, even painted on. Similar to graduated effects mentioned in a previous tutorial, the amount of effect is based on the grayscales of the underlying image. No application can tell the actual hills and valleys of a picture, so PaintShop Pro Photo X2 Ultimate converts the colors of your texture or photo into grayscales. The blacks and whites produce the most notable effects, converting them to valleys or hills, or vice versa depending on your settings. The grays in between produce the rolling hills or the flat areas. Let me show you how this is done. Take a photo of a brick or other textured wall, pavement, something similar, or download one from a variety of stock photo websites. I've opened up an image of a dry, cracked lake bed. This is the image that will be my source image for my displacement map. I will first save this image into one of my displacement map folders by going to File, Save, Copy, As. And I've gone to Program Files, Corel, Paint Shop Pro Photo, and I've opened up the 04 folder. You can go ahead and take a look at some of the other folders, and you'll notice gradients and other displacement maps that are available in there if you have a minute. If you have version 10, look for the displacement maps folder in this area here instead. Now let's add some big, bold text. Center justify it, click apply, and because it is still vectoring resizable, you can just stretch it out to increase the font size. To set the stroke and fill, I can simply right click on the text and go to properties. Now, because I want to mold this text to the textured background, I can't have it remain a vector that text defaults as. So I will right-click on the vector layer and choose Convert to Raster Layer. Now, with my text layer still selected, I'm going to go to the Effects menu, Distortion Effects, Displacement Map. In the Displacement Map drop-down, make sure at least it says Displacement Maps or All. Choose the image you just saved as a copy in this folder. And since the preview box only shows the effect of the text layer but not the background, I've also selected preview on image. Now, if your effect is a little too much or too little, make sure 3D surface is checked. And try adjusting the intensity over here. And the blur over here. But just remember, these settings are very sensitive to change. So when you've satisfied with this part, click OK. Although the type follows the contour of the background, it's not quite realistic yet. Therefore, over here in the Layers palette, I'm going to choose a Blend Mode. And I found through some experimentation that one that works good is Burn, and the other is Multiply. And you can even adjust the opacity with this slider here. And there you have it. Wasn't that easy? Thanks again, and we'll see you in a future lesson.